I cannot believe it. You cannot, Elizabeth. You bewildered him. I cannot believe the devil may own a woman's soul, Mr. Hale, when she keeps an upright way as I have. And if you believe I may do only good work in the world and yet be secretly bound to Satan, then I must tell you, sir, I do not believe it. Woman, you do believe that there are witches. If you think that I am The leaves are blowing in the trees. There's a chill in the air. The clouds partially obscure the moon. Suddenly, a crazed woman flies upon a broom through the sky above, hair blowing freely behind her as she cackles with evil glee. Where is she going? Who is she going with? And most importantly, how is she flying? Before we dive deeper into the magic behind witches' brooms, their flight and how they achieved it, let's cover some things first. The word broom was derived from the word besom, which, in Scotland, meant an unclean or rude woman or girl. We still largely associate these characteristics with witches today, as well as the association between witches and their brooms. The Witches' Sabbath is a nighttime gathering of witches where they practice witchcraft and other rituals. In early modern times, women who were deemed to be witches were said to make salves called flying ointments. These were said to be made from poisonous herbs and were rubbed on the skin of witches to aid them in flight. Grab your capes, hats, and brooms and join us as we fly deeper into the mythology behind witches and their broomsticks. Why did your baby fly? No, 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 she never flew. Are you sure she did? Mr. Collins saw her going over Ingersoll's barn and come down light as a bird, he says. Now look, you could have put them, she never flew. A man named Peter Waldo began preaching in Lyon in the late 1170s. His followers, called Waldensians, adhered to vows of poverty and allowed preaching and consecration of the sacrament by any layperson, which included women. The church saw this as a threat and accused Waldensians of practicing witchcraft. The earliest depiction of women riding broomsticks is an illustration alongside a poem titled Le Champion des Dames, by Martin Lefranc in 1451. The poem is in defense of righteous and moral women, but interrupted briefly by talk of witches. In this illustration, the women's heads are covered, implying that they are Waldensians. It's theorized that the women are riding upon broomsticks because the broomstick is a symbol of domesticity. But to have a woman riding a phallic broomstick is to imply the woman is embracing her sexuality, thus femininity and domesticity gone wild. The aforementioned flying ointments, made with herbal or poisonous plants, when rubbed upon their bodies would give them the ability to fly with demons, devils, and other witches out to the forest, mountains, or near a body of water to participate in their witches' sabbath. These poisonous ointments were created using herbs such as henbane, mandrake, hemlock, deadly nightshade, hellebore, and belladonna. A Dutch physician named Johan Weyer said that women would apply the flying ointment to their genitals, which produced, quote, a sensation of rising into the air and flying, end quote, and that they would use the broomstick as a tool to apply the ointment. A German writer and photographer named Gustav Schenk took the herb Henbane and described his experience as such. I experienced an intoxicating sensation of flying. I soared where my hallucinations were swirling along. This helps point to all imagery depicting witches flying. In 1453, the first confession of broomstick riding was documented. Guillaume Edelin, a priest who criticized the church's warning about witchcraft, was soon arrested and tried for witchcraft. He was tortured until he finally admitted to practicing witchcraft and riding on a broom. He also said that he had seen his, quote, aged mother straddle a broomstick and whisk up the chimney and out of the house. Antoine Rose, the witch of Savoy, confessed under torture that, quote, the devil whose name was Robinet was a dark man who spoke in a hoarse voice. Kissing Robinet's foot in homage, she renounced God and the Christian faith. He put his mark on her on the little finger of her left hand and gave her a stick, 18 inches long, and a pot of ointment. She used to smear the ointment on the stick, 
put it between her legs and say, go, in the name of the devil, go. People suspected of practicing witchcraft were often brutally tortured into confession. This created a lot of false accounts on the practicing of witchcraft and what it entailed. As the persecution of witches ramped up, so did the claims of what witches were capable of and what dark rituals they participated in in order to practice magic. Claims began swirling around that witches would dig up the graves of deceased children and use the fat as a means to blend the herbs and apply it to their skin. In 1428, Matuccia di Francesco, an alleged Italian witch and nun known as the Witch of Rapa Bianca, was reported to have said that witches' flying ointments contained bat blood, vulture fat, and the blood of a newborn baby. Eight years following this, Johannes Snyder wrote in the Fumicarius that boiled, unbaptized babies were the main ingredient. The fears of women and their power, knowledge, and abilities by the church and society at large created an environment filled with pointed fingers, gossip, and rumors about what women were doing inside of their homes. If they were witches, they would not be able to fill leadership roles within the church or society. Whether they ingested these herbs or applied flying ointments to escape their dismal realities or to cope with distressing mental health disorders is unknown to us. Whichever the reason being, it's no wonder these women would want to venture off into the night skies on broomsticks to arrive in a place with other women who felt the same, where they could dance, celebrate, chant, and bond with those just like them. Thank you for journeying with us through the night skies. Put your broomsticks away for the night and fuck yeah folklore.